All right, this is going to be a video tutorial for how to add departmental learning outcomes to your Canvas assessment assignments with the option of whether or not you actually want it to affect the overall assignment grade. So click on the course you're doing. I'm going to use as an example my adult psychopathology course from this semester. And the first thing you're going to want to do before you go to the actual assignment that you've built is you're going to want to come over here to this option called outcomes. So in your outcomes, I already have a few set up because I always like to put my personal course learning outcomes in here. So like these are my course learning outcomes um, because I've found for students that linking course learning outcomes to assignments is something that they enjoy. So they see the bigger picture of why they're doing it, the separate subject. But anyway, so you're going to come over here to your outcomes and you're going to come to find. Once you're in this find menu, you're going to navigate to account standards. You're going to go to Drury Go Psychology. And this semester, what we're assessing is our program learning outcome number three, which has to, which has to do with ethical learning. And you're going to see that all six outcomes that are listed in our ethical learning rubric have already been loaded in here. So you're going to come over here to add all outcomes. All the scoring and everything is done it's all loaded so then whoops in the way once you've gone to all add all outcomes you're going to come down here to done so now what you're going to see when you navigate to your class you're going to see this line item this folder for this rubric for the six point ethical learning outcome rubric you're going to see all six points here and you're going to see that the rating of them matches with the rubric that we had emailed you out that we're going to be using. So now once you've done that and your outcomes are loaded and you've checked to make sure it looks how you want it to look, you're going to go back to your course page and now is where, is where you're going to open the assignment that you're actually pairing with this program learning outcome. So for this class, I'm going to be using my final paper. So I'm going to come down here to this final paper. Now, the great thing about using Canvas for assessment, which is different from our past software, is I'm going to be able to put these outcomes in my same grading rubric that I already use for this paper. I know how I want to grade my paper, right? And this is worth 85 points. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to edit my rubric. And again, this works best if you've already written your assignment and loaded in the rubric that you want to grade with. It's just going to make it easier for you. These are old ones. Let me get these out of here real quick. That's from when I used it for writing assessment. Okay, so now that you're on this screen and you're in your edit rubric option, you're going to keep everything about how you want to grade your paper the same, but you're going to come over here to find outcome. And now when you click this, this ethic rubric that you had already imported into your class, you're going to see all six of these here. Now you have two options at this point. You're going to need to individually select each one to import it. But on each of these um, rubric line items for assessment, you're going to have the option if you want this criterion to be part of the paper score. So for example, this, this one is topic selection. Maybe you want whether or not they chose a good topic to be worth a grade on the paper. So maybe you do use this specific criterion for scoring. You're going to click import. And now you see that your rubric grade, for example, on mine, it's gone up from 85 to 89 because I said I wanted this one to be worth points. But you're going to keep doing this for the find, find outcomes for each of these under this ethics folder, because again, that's what we're assessing this semester. But let's say for the limitations and implications, I don't want this to be part of their course score. I don't know why I'm working bottom up. Um, but I'm going to uncheck use criteria for scoring and I'm going to import. And so you can see that now this has been added as a line item to my rubric, but my point value hasn't changed because I told it I didn't want it to be part of the score. So you're going to keep doing these for all six of these outcomes. And again, you can choose if you want them to be part of the assignment score or not. From the assessment team's perspective, we, we honestly don't care how you handle that. It's how you want to score your paper. But the great thing about this is this gives you a lot more leeway as an instructor because it gives you the ability to be more fair to your students 
where you're able to say, okay, I feel like this was an A quality paper. All of these content things that I had asked for from my students in this final paper, maybe it was a student who did a great job on all this and they deserve an A based on the written instructions. But you do want to indicate for assessment that, you know, maybe they did kind of struggle with having a clear and relevant topic or, you know, their limitations and implications was way off, but that wasn't really part of the overall goal of the paper. So I don't feel like that should really affect their final grade that much. So this gives you your leeway as a professor that maybe you have a student who has earned an A on this paper in terms of fulfilling what you asked for. But from an assessment standpoint, you do want to convey that this is a student that does still need some work in certain areas without it impacting their final grade. And this is really, really important for assessment because we do need that accuracy of data. We don't expect students taking intro level classes, 100 and 200 level classes to be scoring at mastery level on everything related to um, inquiry and analysis ethical development. It's not reasonable, right? So we don't expect you to be returning response rates of fours straight down the row for your freshman and sophomore students. They probably haven't developed it yet. They probably are developing it. So this gives you the ability to give us an accurate reflection of where your students are in their skill sets without it necessarily impacting their final grade. So that's a video walkthrough. I'll also put together a document for how to do this. And then please feel free to email me if you have any additional questions about how this works out specifically for any of your courses.